morning. Welcome to the teacher as a classroom manager. The three lecturers of the classroom manager, Dr. Elel Dolo, Dr. A. A. Sepeka, that's myself, and Mrs. I. Mujapilo. Thank you for being here and listening, and please take all the tips and all the necessary information that you need to know. Uh, the presentation layout of this module, we are only dealing with eight chapters. I know the book has got so many chapters. Some of you have been asking questions, why not the other chapters? Remember, this book you will use as you continue in your journey when you become a teacher. The chapters are there on the screen all the eight chapters that you need to deal with. You don't have to deal with all the chapters in this book. The chapter one deals with the millennial generation understanding and, and engaging in today's learners. I just want to mention that today's learners, we call them the millennial generation. We call them millennial generation by birth and date and name. Ask yourself, why are they called like that? Why are they given this name? Because they are technological. This is what you can expect in the examination that you should explain what a millennial generation is. Now, you should understand their characteristics. Characteristics of millennial generation is very important. How they behave, how they do things, how they want to be treated. That is what we call characteristics. Learning styles of learning mil uh, millennial generation is very important. They don't want to sit in the classroom like we used to do textbook method and what have you. They just want technology. They Google, they use the WhatsApp, they use all these technological things that are coming. Remember, we are preparing ourselves for the fourth industrial revelation. That is why this generation is so important for us. That is why they don't like reading. That is why they don't like uh, dealing with one subject forever. Then in the same chapter, understanding and, en and, and engaging with today's learners. If you are an older person like myself, it will feel like you. They don't understand, they don't want to listen. No, because they got, get bored easily. What they want is activity with their hands, with their mind because technology for them is very important. And another thing, it's quick. That is why they like it. The digital divide, they want to share. They want to share, that is why we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have all these things that are used all over the world. In future, that is how they are going to co communicate. This is the generation that is going to grow old into technology. They won't be like us thinking that I have to meet with so-and-so. They will just meet using Skype. They will use anything for, 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 for them to communicate. Just like I'm doing now, you're communicating with me with YouTube. If you understand the millennial generation, you can put it in your own words. The question can come, uh, explain or please tell us how do you understand what is the millennial generation? Just, you know, preparing your mind for the exam, that is very important. And another question that can, can come from this chapter is, what are the core traits connected to the millennial uh, generations? But please understand, if you understand the ways, make sure that you understand the meaning of words. What is traits? What is millennial? What is generation? If you understand the words, you will be able to answer your questions. I'm moving now to chapter two. Chapter two deals with self-management for the educator. We are preparing you to become an educator. And if you want to become an educator, you must be able to do the following. You must be able to manage your emotions. You must be able to manage your stress levels. You must be able to manage your anger. You must be able to manage conflict and becoming assertive. Becoming assertive doesn't mean you must just uh, be this person who is giving instruction and say, it's either you do it or you get out of my class. No, no, you must be able to manage conflict nowadays. It's so rife in our schools. Teachers must be able to understand this 
these children are not the type that listens and sit down and especially the primary high school, it doesn't matter. School children are just like that. So you must be able to manage yourself. This chapter deals, when you read it, we prepare you to be this person who will be able to say, you know, I feel I'm angry now. How do I do with this? Move away from the situation that is making you angry. Chapter three, this deals with the management of tasks in the classroom. Remember, you are here to teach, you are here to manage people's emotions, your emotions and their emotions. Now, there are just three points there in this chap under this chapter that I want you to take care of, like the nature and aim of the classroom management. By the way, when you are a teacher, you are a manager in your own space. You are a manager in that class. You manage that class in everything that you do, they do. You manage them. And if you are a manager, you have to have the skills that I've just mentioned in chapter two, that you are able to can manage children because you can manage yourself. Then number two, approaches to classroom management, management functions in the classroom. Teaching is not about you standing there and telling the children that a verb is this, a noun is this, or you go to what is happening today, talking about history, Mandela history, and so on. You manage everything inside that classroom. You must be able to see when your class is disturbed. You must be able to see when a child is not concentrating. You must be able, you must manage the classroom as a whole. Now, Understanding and know the levels of classroom planning. That's very important. It, 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 you know, it, you, I might, you might find this in your examination question to ask you, do you understand, do you know the levels of classroom uh, planning? How do you plan your classroom? Chapter four, the, long, uh, the educator as a leader. Remember I said management, self-management, managing your classroom now you are an educator as a leader you lead every person who decides to be a teacher is a leader you are a leader from home you are a leader in your classroom the long-term leadership task of the educator please concentrate on that figure 4.1 it it's illustrate i didn't put the model on the chart there but it's in your textbook figure 4.1 and figure 4.2. That is the long-term leadership and the short-term leadership. That module is illustrated very, very clearly that you should follow those steps as they are, then you will see yourself as a leader, but being an educator, changing people's mind. Now, questions might be, choose any two leadership styles, be able to define them. If you are a leader, you have styles of leadership. You can be a laser sphere leader, you can be the strict leader, you can be, but they are in your textbook, in your chapter four. Please concentrate that if you are a leader, you must have this style. Then terms in all the chapters must be learned, understood, and be able to apply them by giving examples as a teacher and in the classroom. That is, you are a leader. You lead the classroom, you lead the subjects that you are teaching, you lead with your character and behavior. Now, chapter five, I've put all the, uh, the managing the classroom environment. I've put all the sub, you know, titles under that. The classroom as a learning community is very important. The classroom as a room, you'll ask yourself, why community? Yes, it's a community of learners in the classroom. Features of learning community building stages of a positive classroom climate. Understand that when you talk about climate of the classroom, the way you handle your classroom, you build the classroom climate. As I enter your classroom, I should feel that warm climate, the welcoming climate, the children must feel the same, that they are safe in that space, the climate as a whole. I'm not talking about the climate of the weather, I'm talking about the climate of character, of behavior, of planning. The classroom must show that this person knows what he or she is doing. Managing the physical environment. We are talking about a classroom must not be littered, a classroom must not be dirty, a classroom must not be confused. 
the setup of the classroom, how do children sit, how do children uh, communicate, it's the physical environment. We talk about chairs, we don't expect children to be sitting on top of each other. We expect the climate of the classroom to be conducive to learning. Uh, then managing resources for effective teaching. By resources we mean if you are in the advanced schools, we talk about uh, the whiteboard, for instance, the laptops or whatever they are using. Those are resources that we use. But textbooks are still used. Chalkboard is still used. Those are the resources. The textbooks that children are using should not be outdated or dilapidated or, you know, they must just teach them to take care of those textbooks because it is their resources. You are more resourceful than them because you know the subject, you understand what you are doing. Then independent strategies, the flipped classroom, establishing the socio-emotional environment, and the introduction of this chapter five, managing the classroom environment. When we talk about environment, when we talk about a community, when we talk about climate, please don't think of the outside world, just think of the classroom that you are involved with right now. Chapter six, here now, we are saying, please know, managing participation in the classroom. After you are this planner as a teacher, you run your classroom as you're supposed to do it, uh, you must have this participation in the classroom. You are not going to be that leader who is not going to allow children to participate in what you are doing. Learner motivation. Theories of human motivation, extrinsic and intrinsic motivation, understanding learning, understanding constructive teaching and learning, understanding experience experiential learning, managing cooperative learning in the classroom, uh, then I have, I've put some questions there to say, what is cooperative learning? Why cooperative learning? It is very important for you to understand as a student who's going to sit for this examination that you understand what is cooperative learning. You understand what, why should we have cooperative learning? Because one way learning is not conducive. Some children cannot listen forever. The lifespan of children differ in different ways. Now, as a teacher, you must be so creative as an educator to make sure that they participate they, they, they are together in everything that they do. That is why we even have, uh, when you go back to chapter five, uh, you, that is why we have group sittings, pair sittings, and so on, so that they are all, all of them are cooperative. Components for organizing cooperative learning in the classroom, then preparation. Those are the subs of this chapter six, positive inter, uh, interdependence, individual and group accountability, face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, I don't think on all those that uh, we have mentioned, all those subs that are in your textbook, you just go through them, then you'll understand. But from what I've already explained in chapter six, when I started, all these are included in the whole chapter. Thank you very much. Now, managing parental involvement. We all know that there is no school that can run without parents. We all know that these children come from different types of homes. We all know that these children come from different places, different villages or townships with different characters. Now, it is very important that parents should be involved. We involve them by becoming SGBs in our schools. We involve them by inviting them to our school to see what is happening with their children. We involve them in many, many ways to check their children's books, to help with their homework and so on. Now, define the term parent. I don't know what you think about parent in your own mind. 
who is this parent? What is a parent? What is the role of a parent? Why is this person so important in the child's life? By the way, you as a teacher, you are also a parent in loco. You are also teaching this child. You are also building this child because this child is with you more hours than the parents at home. Now, the parents must understand their rights and duties. The parents must be there to be involved in the classroom management. If there is something that you want to be helped with, don't run to the school principal's office. Call the parents of your class to say, we need to build some cupboards for these children with this card box. What can we do? You become creative. You become this teacher who involves them, even if it's a, to them or to you. You might think it's a minor thing, of which it's not a minor thing. A model for parent involvement. Please take care of that 171.3. Manage an integral approach for parental involvement. Initial contact and interview identifying needs, goals, and objectives. You can never do those things alone unless you are with the parents. Collaboration and communication with parents, not only with the reports, not only with the books. Invite these parents at all times to involve them in their children's uh, growing in education. You make sure that there is collaboration and partnership with, with them. Then you communicate effectively with parents by calling them, by making sure that you know the parents of your children. Barriers to collaboration and participation is very important because the barriers can cause you not to approach these children properly because you don't know the parents or when the parents are there, you don't deal with what you are supposed to deal with. Then how can parents be involved in the school? know that you know be creative because you know this module as you are practicing you are a practicing teacher to become a teacher you must be creative you must show us how can parents be involved uh, the last chapter eight this is the last chapter managing classroom through effective administration as I said earlier you are a leader by just writing the names of the student, you are administrating something, you are busy. The task of a registered teacher, responsibilities of a, re a registered teacher, financial administration, uh, filing systems, annual work schedules, assessment plan, formal assessment tasks and memoranda. You'll find that there are things that you are doing, you think that ah, those are minor things. Classroom, just a classroom register, that is very important, it's administration. In some schools, you have to even handle monies when children are going out for trip or when something, in some schools, in some schools you don't even do that. Textbooks or other learning and teaching support material, that is administration because now you've got to record the children took, uh, the children took out these books, the numbers and so on. Record sheets, control and assessment in the classroom, managing assessment, implications for the classroom, the role of technology in managing classrooms effectively. This is what you can do. You have your laptop, you record things in uh, Excel sheet, you are trying to make things easier for yourself, for you to get your records in order and the parents to know that you are an administrator. I think with this, I have given you some hint and tips. You know where to find us. You can call us, you can do whatever, but just know that I say, the team says to you all the best with your examinations, preparations. Know this, learn, iterate, adjust, and do better. Take calculated risk learn, adjust, and keep going. As long as you are moving forward, you have not failed. Thank you very much for listening.